And double success for Australia's Patria Thomas at the World Short Course Swimming Championships in Moscow. Thomas led from start to finish in the 200 metres butterfly final, claim Australia's only gold medal on day one. She held on to beat China's Yu Yang and American Mary Desenza in championship record time. But it's Thomas who wins it. Thomas who wins it. Thomas then teamed up with Laurie Munns, Gian Rooney and Elka Graham in the 4x200 freestyle relay final. China came from behind the US to win the gold medal in world record time, with Australia taking bronze. In the men's 4x100 freestyle final, Australia led early but faded to finish fourth in a blanket finish. The Victoria Titans are just one loss away from being knocked out of the finals after dominating all season. The Titans were beaten by Adelaide in game one of their semi-final series 99-92. The Melbourne Tigers will be hoping for a better result for Mark Bradkey, who tonight reaches another NBL milestone. The Melbourne Tigers had the lightest of workouts this morning before tonight's semi-final against the Razorbacks. The first up win's crucial for the Tigers, but the game holds even greater significance for Mark Bradkey will be playing his 400th NBL match. Being the 400th, I'd love it to uh, have a victory as well, you know, for the team, but also personally, so you've got a good good uh, memory of the, of the 400th. The Tigers will be hoping for a stronger showing from Andrew Gaze, who's still battling an ankle complaint. Each day it gets better and better, and hopefully I'll be able to contribute a little bit more as the series goes on. The Victoria Titans horror final series is continuing. Invincible at times during the season, they were anything but last night. Adelaide, on the other hand, made close to a perfect start. Adelaide have scored the first 10. 36ers, led by Willie Farley, throwing a game-high 26 points, were on fire early. Farley goading his West Sydney rivals in the bleachers. Adelaide's lead had blown out to 14 at half-time, with contributions from all quarters. The Titans started to surge in the third term, with this great three-pointer from Tony Ronaldson finally bringing the locals to their feet. But a combination of the Titans' inability to convert at crucial moments and a final series heading off the rails saw coach Brian Gorgian overheat. The Titans, now to have any hope of making it through to an NBL grand final, must twice overcome Adelaide on the road. The next match to be played on Friday night. Nick Johnston, ABC News. To the weather now, and here's Mike Bailey. Thanks, Tony. Good evening. A gusty change along the coast today, bringing showers and storms to some areas and an end to a bout of almost summer weather. Sydney's temperatures, for example, went from 17 to 28. That was one above overnight and four above by day. We got as high as 29 at Richmond late this afternoon, and that was ahead of storms that moved through that area, producing even some light hail around the Blue Mountains briefly. Temperatures now a couple below the average in Sydney following the change, 17.9 degrees at Observatory Hill. The relative humidity is 82%. The wind a gusty south so Easter, but the pressure rising in the wake of the change. Around the temperatures in New South Wales today, high in the northern parts of the state, but they were cooler further south where the change arrived earlier. No reports from Bega for the past couple of nights, but nearby centres there on the coast, Marimbula and Maruya, went from 13 to 18 degrees today. Top rain for the 24 hours to 9 this morning was in the south of the state. That was at Charlotte Pass with 17 millimetres. Temperatures this morning down to 2 degrees at Threadbow. Today, the 9 to 3 rain was also top in the south of the state at Bombala and 32 degrees, the highest temperature in Tibaburra. The rain spread further north after three. But it hasn't affected too many other parts of the continent. It's been fine around the main centres today, but cooler in the south, down to 15 degrees for the top temperature in Hobart, again in the wake of that change. That's been the main feature of the satellite picture for the past 24 hours, quite a wide band of cloud with it, and behind it, decidedly cooler air. It's now moving to the north of New South Wales, where a trough is likely to be active for the next couple of days. A high pressure ridge behind the front will be the dominant weather impact for most of New South Wales for the next couple of days. That will produce onshore winds at first, only gradually tending around from the northeast and leading to a slight lifting in temperatures as the weekend progresses. For the next 24 hours, showers about the coast and nearby ranges, but they should contract mostly to the north by later tomorrow, although some light falls are still possible further south. Around the capital cities and main centres, some morning showers expected tomorrow for both Sydney and Darwin. It should be mainly 
only fine in Melbourne and Hobart and fine elsewhere. To New South Wales and a strong wind warning is current tonight for all coastal waters. An isolated storm is still possible about the east but then clearing. Tomorrow some showers about the coast and nearby ranges, mostly north from around Sydney. Inland it should continue at least warm for this time of year but temperatures down a little on the past couple of days following that change. The Sydney outlook is 16 to 23 degrees near the coast, 14 to 24 for the inland suburbs. It'll be a cloudy day with south to southeast winds and some showers at least in the morning. Sunrise is at 11 minutes past six, the first high tide of the day, 1.5 metres, and winds gradually easing back to about 10 to 15 knots on coastal waters. Looking to the weekend, a shower or two possible early Saturday, maybe early Sunday, but the days should be mostly fine. Tony. Thanks, Mike. This is ABC News. I'm Tony Eastley. Have a good evening. Bye for now. After 